All right, so we've got our first part in for the assembly of our creature. We've got the head structure, kind of the foundational structure of the head. But I want the head to be a little blinged out. So this is going to be a luxury model, and we want to bring in some, some exotic textures and imports, right? Like leather seats. So I'm going to bring in this chicken, which is beautiful, high-resolution reference. You can tell by how big it is. But what I need is this stuff. I love the grain around the, the beak and the snout, all the textures. I love the furriness. So I'm going to duplicate that right away and then immediately delete that smart object because that's taking up a ton of memory. Then I'm going to Command T. Let me make sure I'm on the right layer. Command T on that duplicate and immediately scale it down to work with my reference. Now this is where the landscape assignment is different than this assignment. Here we are going to start to refine the components as they come in. right? So you don't refine the foundation component of the head until the end because you don't want to spend a lot of time erasing things that, that might get overlapped by another element anyway. But as I add things on top, I'm going to start cleaning this up. So I'm going to start selecting this space around it. Oh, I want it to be on contiguous. I'm using the magic wand at its default 32 and then holding down shift to add to it. Luckily, this photo reference has a background that's less saturated and is also blurrier, you know, out of focus, like a good wildlife photographer. And so it's relatively easy to select it. But if it's more difficult, I'll just go in and erase up to the edge by hand. I want to keep everything sharp. So this isn't like using the soft eraser for our landscape. I want everything sharp and clean here. And then I am also going to add to this. This is what I'm going to delete away. And I'm going to grab some of these hairs and kind of arbitrarily extend this texture. And this will get blended in to my other animal textures. Okay, so I'm adding that to the selection, and now I can delete. Right. Now, what if I think it's just too sharp, or it leaves a little halo? So you see all that stuff? Well, then I can use the tricks we learned last assignment. Select the empty space around, go to Select and Mask, to refine the edge, to feather it up. It was supposed to remember my settings. Oh, good, it did. <laughs> it just took a while to load. Come on. And that's gonna, gonna bite into the selection and then erase away just a little bit more. So you see that gets rid, especially with a couple deletes, a lot of that debris. Okay, now I can play with this element and it's amazing how quickly this is gonna become a custom creature. I love this, how striking that eye becomes, right? And it works with the tongue already, but I can use Command T to warp it, to kind of nip and tuck and tug it into doing what I want. And then I can take its opacity down a little bit and see where I might want to erase. I think I want that nostril still in there. So take it down to about 80%. And then I use my eraser with my stylus. And the stylus I'm going to use, it's not going to be super soft edged anymore. This is finishing work. I'm going to use the third brush down, which is pressure sensitive for size. And I'm going to make its hardness about 80. And I'm going to make its size probably about 100. Okay, and now I'll start erasing out at 100%, or, you know, I could, well, yeah, I'll do 100% to start with, to really show that nostril of the Komodo dragon. 
Okay, now that I know I want that, I can shift to full opacity on the layer and then less opacity, maybe about 50% on my eraser. And then I can start softening my eraser because now I'm going to start blending this element. It's like welding it to the Komodo dragon element. By using the low opacity, it's already mixing the colors for me a little bit, mixing the textures a little bit. Even though one's a lizard and a reptile and one's a bird, you know, very different species, this is how I can kind of blend textures. And get what I want. I also want to play with the top of it a little bit. So now that I have this, this whole area, actually, let's do this. I want to play with the angle of this to match my sketch a little bit better. So I'm going to work with just subtle warps and changes. Undo that because I don't want to affect this side at all. I just want to affect the top. So Command T, warp, but be careful just to work from this side. And kind of knock that back. Because I don't want everyone to just see, oh, that's a chicken he's playing with. I want it to be its own creation, its own thing. Now I can start blending these textures and these colors again. I want to leave a little bit of that brightness in the snout. But my intention is it for it to be more lizard-like than it is beak-like. And then I want this little fin on the bottom to feel like it is actually on the bottom. Okay. Then if I think I'm close, and I do think I'm pretty close, I can go to even lower opacity and start blending in these edges. And then, all important step, just like we did for our landscape, we want to play with the levels and the color balance of each element to help them match. So I'm going to actually brighten the midtones a little bit because that head is in pretty bright light on the Komodo dragon. And then I'm going to use color balance to knock back some of that red lighting. And then the shadows. Yeah, it's pretty warm. Put some of that red back. You can see how that helps it sink, especially around the eye. Helps it feel like it's all part of the same creature, same universe. I can also use my burn tool. Remember, always less than 30 on your exposure. I'm going to do the mid-tones, soft brush. And I can knock back a little bit of this so it doesn't look so bright because it's distracting. And I can even do an image adjustment hue saturation and just play with the actual hue of the eyeball. Maybe push it a little bit more orange and desaturate it a little bit. There we go. So now these tones feel all part of the same creature. And just like that, we've really recreated it. Okay. We could add more and more features. I have other things. Um, I was kind of interested in maybe using this. I'll just show you what that might look like. Whoa, that's a big reference. Mm. 
shrink it down to something more usable. This is going to be kind of like a main behind it. But I don't want to lose too much of the anatomy. So grab what I think I could use, duplicate it, delete what's behind, and now move this underneath my other reference, right? Transform it. Give them a nice pink puff. Going to immediately play with levels. So obviously that lighting isn't the same. Let's darken those midtones a little bit, darken the shadows a little bit. Bring it down. Then I'm going to use my magic wand. I'll try to clean out, clean up this outside space. where it matters most. Ah, it's losing some of those feathers. Let me delete what I can. The gray helps you see these edges better. Feathers can be the hardest things to select out. So I grab that background, but then in these internal areas, I can just um, hold down Option and subtract them from the selection, like so, and just delete them in segments. Uh, Command D to deselect. And then sometimes you just have to, because this contrast is so close, instead of using a, a lower tolerance on the magic wand, I'm just going to create my own edge here that I can soften later with an eraser. Get all of that. Delete it. And then the magic wand should work better down here. Okay, and then I'm going to do the whole select the outside of it and use select and mask to soften it. It will remember my settings if I have that checked. Say OK. Photoshop is processing much better since I restarted it. It's doing difficult things faster. And now I can use it my eraser at 100% opacity, larger, and keep the edge slightly soft. And I can give him a nice little pink mane. Now this is where it's really easy to overdo it and just keep layering and layering. But the head is a focal point. So sometimes it deserves your attention. Here I'm going to play with dodge and burn. I'm going to burn the midtones, especially on the top here. You want to be careful about burning shadows, but you can get away with burning your highlights down a little bit. So that looks like there's shadows happening as these textures interact. And then I'm going to play with the color balance. Give a lot more yellow in the midtones, in the highlights. So it makes sense with the orange. In the shadows, let's see, I'm going to be a little more blue. You'll see how all these things make a lot of difference. And then I can also burn underneath the head quite a bit, but if you do it